Creatives all around, your questions about how law can benefit your creative business is about to be answered. Don't you know who that you're about? Cause I'm a fight, and we're a fight, and that's a fact. Welcome everybody to another episode of That's a Fact. I'm your host, Kirsty Adams, singer, songwriter, violinist. And this is a very special edition of That's a Fact because beside me is Natasha Otero and Franza van der Westezen to talk about how you can create revenue and secure your creative business with legal matters. Natasha Otero, please tell us about who you are, what you do, where you come from. Also tell us about what you think of Fem Arts Cape Town. My name is Natasha and I am an admitted attorney, but I am also a freelance cellist. I studied music um, in, at UCT and I did my BMOS honors there as well. And then I did my LLB at UCT too. I have been involved in music since I can remember. Um, so I've always loved, loved, loved music and um, it's my first passion. And secondly, law. Founded on Record Law, an online um, consulting firm for artists and creatives. Um, and that's that's me. Then how I feel about Femme Arts Cape Town, I think it's great. I love the initiative and the platform. It's about time that we have the space for artists, um, especially female artists, to be able to express themselves, to be um, showcased and to see what wonderful things we are all doing and capable of doing. So thank you Kirsty for giving us the opportunity to have the space and to be able to have these conversations. Thanks Natasha, such wonderful words and so good to get to know you. Francois, please tell us about who you are, where you come from, what you do and what your insights are on Fairmont Cape Town. And just as an aside, let's just note the fact that Francois is the very first man to appear on the Fairmont Cape Town page. Welcome and thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kirsty, for having me. Um, I feel very honored to be the first man on Fairmont Cape Town. Um, so about me, I studied law, where after I did a music production course. I'm actually a music producer as well and an admitted attorney. Um, I also did my master's degree in intellectual property, where after I did my articles and I met Natasha. Um, we didn't like the commercial and the litigation field, so we decided to, um, you know, help artists and creatives because that's the industry that we relate with most. I, I think it's amazing what you're doing um, and it's amazing to see all the up and coming female talent in Cape Town and in South Africa in general. So, yeah, it's amazing what you guys are doing. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing a bit about yourself, Francois, and it's it's so great to have you on board to enlighten us. <laughs> Everyone is burning to know about how we can use law to benefit art. So without further ado, question number one is, how can a lawyer help someone in the creative space? This, this is a question that I think a lot of people don't um, often think about. Um, having a creative uh, business is the same as having any other business. Um, so when you enter into a creative venture with yourself or anyone else, you need to treat it as a business. And when you treat something as a business, you need to make sure that the things that you are doing, that you are accountable for what you're doing. And when you enter into relationships with other people, that you protect yourself and your business, uh, whether that is your music business, photography, filming, composition, whatever it may be. Um, so I think it's so important that we start having a relationship with the legal side of things um, so that, like I already said, we protect um, ourselves, our rights, our copyrights. Um, and it's so beneficial for, for both industries to start collaborating with each other so that we're not only um, dealing with law at the time when we encounter problems, but rather dealing with law um, from the beginning as a form of a, a, a nurturing um, 
platform for our business. So use it as a tool. Um, so that's, I, I think that it's so beneficial for creatives, whether it's music, filming, uh, photography, design, architects, to, to um, familiarize themselves with the law and the rights and work together. What business structure should I utilize as an artist? And when is a good time to incorporate a company? So when you're considering the business structure that you're going to be dealing with, the important thing is to look to first consider what, what business are you looking at? Um, and then to once you've decided what kind of business you are going into, to look at the advantages and disadvantages of either incorporating a company, have dealing in your business as a sole proprietor or having a partnership, um, so that you can determine what's, what's more beneficial and what the disadvantages of each of those um, structures are. And, and that will be determined by the nature of your business, by the liabilities that you want to incur or if you don't want to incur liabilities, um, and then the tax implications. Um, so that's, um, that's what lawyers can, can help you out with. So when you're thinking of starting a brand or starting a band or a, an, a name for yourself, say for example, if you're a fine artist and you want to make sure that you have a good structure, then you would approach a lawyer and then they will give you all the, all the, different, all the, all the different kinds of structures that you can have and then they will say, well, for what you are trying to do, for what it is that you're trying to achieve, we would recommend that you go with a structure um, so that you know what the benefits and disadvantages are. It's good that a lawyer will go through that with you and be able to explain all that terminology, right? Yeah, uh, the, the yeah. terminology from them, because I mean, often, you know, people that are not lawyers, nobody understands really how that works. So you want to make sure that you know what you're going into. So sometimes it's not necessary for someone who's working on their own to register a company. So it's, you know, you don't need to do that. However, if you do not want to be personally liable for whatever you're doing and you want to separate your personal assets from your professional assets, then we, we, we might say to you, okay, well, if that's what you want to do, maybe it's beneficial for you to enter to register a company so that you can have a separate liability, a separate entity from your own mm -hmm. person. But that, you know, that, that you, come, okay. you, you have, it's, it's based on a case by case basis and um, each case would be different. I have been given a management contract. What should I be aware of or look for in this kind of contract? So with a management contract, again, they, they all so specific to the kind of work that you are doing. So we don't want to use a, a one stroke brush approach to all contracts. So you want to make sure that each case, each contract is treated as an individual contract. Things that one needs to be aware of when signing um, a contract, a management contract, is what are your obligations under that contract? What are your liabilities, your obligations? What is expected from you? And if something were to go wrong under the agreement that you have, what are the consequences of a breach of contracts? Um, so those are the things that you want to look, at, look for in a contract like that. And then also you want to ensure that you, um, you are aware of your rights and whether there are restrictions as to what you can and cannot do. So basically you want to be able to understand every clause that's under that contract. So you can you know, work freely under the structure that you've been given. It's almost like accounting in a way where you need to look for almost like anything that can go wrong. But um, as an artist, as artists, we have, I think all of us have a lot to focus on. And if we want to advance our art, then um, we need someone else to handle that situation. I think a lot of the times artists, they don't want to deal with the admin side of things. and. That's why we say, you don't have to deal with it. Let us deal with it, mm. because we know how to deal with it. Um, <laughs> that's why we study law and we practice law. Um, exactly. Like we had a conversation before, is that I think that 
artists are so desperate to be noticed and they they will very easily and quickly sign any sort of contract and then afterwards they will realize that their rights have been limited or they can't do certain gigs or they can't mm -hmm. do certain exhibitions yeah. and they don't understand why but actually all of that was stipulated in the contract mm -hmm. so if they had that contract mm -hmm. written by a lawyer then those terms and conditions could have been negotiated to give you a little bit more freedom as an artist so we have to be very very careful and aware before signing a contract that we know what are the consequences of me signing this contract and for how long so often those contracts could they usually have a time period as to when you are you, you sometimes if, if i can put it like this owned by a company that wants to manage you you know so they, they will take complete control over all of your work so you want to know okay can i do this for a year is it okay to have a 12 month contract for them a 24 month contract so all of those things you want to you want to deal with but the most important thing is that do not be so eager to sign a contract without knowing exactly what it is that you sign should i sign a record deal and what should i watch out for in such a contract I mean, this you can you can incorporate this question to what we discussed in the previous question. Of course. Should you sign a record deal? Uh, yes. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> sign a deal. I agree. Yeah. Don't doubt. But it depends. Yeah, it depends. I mean, if you are signing, I mean, we were, we were discussing it earlier. If you if you have someone who's interested in your music, I mean, wow, that's amazing. But again. Um, I have experienced friends that have signed record deals and they have realized that it was not beneficial for them at all because they were so restricted in what they could and could not do. Um, mm -hmm. So they have regretted it and they wish that they had taken a bit more care before they signed those record deals. Um, but so, so lawyers, won't, lawyers won't get you that record deal. That comes from your own doing. You know, it's because of your own talents and your own work that, that people notice you and they want to sign you onto a record label. But what we, we as lawyers can do is to make sure that we negotiate the best terms mm. for you that are the most beneficial for you. And that's and what just to want. make sure that you're treated fairly. A great thing to have a record deal, but make sure, especially with big record labels or even small record labels, sometimes those can also be quite bad. But yeah. definitely a must, must, must make sure that you um, consult with a with a lawyer before you sign that contract. Should my band enter into a band agreement? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely yes. Um, I think entering into a band agreement is the same thing as having a company and having different players in your company. So having different partners, um, people that bring different things into, into your business. Um, the most important thing when you have a contract for your band is to ensure that should the band um, break break down, you know, if, if people want to leave the band, then what happens to, to the band? Uh, what happens to the band name? Um, what happens to the music that's composed for that band? You know, do we copyright it as a band? Does it belong to, to one individual of that band? So all of those things can be stipulated in the contract. And then also you want to ensure that everybody knows, okay, if we earn this amount of money from our gigs, how is it distributed? Um, all, those, all those little things that usually don't ever get spoken about and then they usually come out when there's disagreements or you know people leave the band and then it's a big drama especially when dealing with musicians quite dramatic <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed to say that <laughs> i can say it so yeah often happens is there are going to be especially when you work with people all the time and you're so close there are going to be disagreements so you know why have to go through that uncomfortable yeah. you know like situation when when it, everybody has agreed okay we all agree that you are going to earn this amount of money from a gig i'm going to earn this and if yeah. we break if we break up as a band this will continue as this and each person goes their own way so i mean it's so easy to have a contract it doesn't have to be a complicated contract yeah but yes for sure mm. 
the intellectual property rights. You know, if your um, band breaks up, it doesn't mean that the intellectual property rights just disappear. That person probably still owns some intellectual property rights. So you need to have an agreement that regulates a situation like that as well, I think. Um, mm -hmm. just, to, just to determine what will happen to the, to the copyrights in the work um, when someone leaves. I'm glad you brought up intellectual property because I think people need to understand what that actually means. So maybe, Franto, if you can explain to us what exactly do you mean by intellectual property? Intellectual property covers a wide range of um, rights that you have in terms of legislation, uh, mostly. Mm -hmm. I think when we're talking about musicians, copyrights is probably the main um, intellectual property right that comes into play. Um, so obviously you get copyright, patents, trademarks, design rights, everything like that. But for musicians, I think copyright is the main intellectual property right that we're talking about. If you create a work, then you automatically get copyright in that work. So you don't need to go register it or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't think that artists realize that it is automatic, like you have this right. Um, and they don't know what to do with it and how, to, how it works and how to use it. So I think if you consult with an attorney, they'll be able to explain to you exactly, you know, what rights you have in, in your work and how you can protect it. I think that a lot of people don't realize that you don't have copyright in ideas. So if you have an idea in your head and you tell someone about it or you sing a tune and someone hears it and decides to copy it, um, you know, there's no copyright in your idea. The only way to get copyright is to reduce it to material form. So how you do that is you record yourself singing or um, playing music, or you write the music down. Um, so it's only when you actually reduce it to material form that you get copyright. So um, obviously if you claim copyright infringement, you would need to prove that you were the first um, person to create that work and to have copyright vested um, in yourself. So there are a number of ways you can do it. Like I said, um, you write it down in order to, to get a date next to it. I think just email it to yourself or save it on your computer, you know, um, mm. with the date, then you'll be able to prove that, that you were the first creator of that work. That's a good idea. Even, even perhaps a screen grab of the file in your folder um, could help, something like that. There are so many ways around it. <laughs> Broadcasting laws regard, regarding streaming, can you explain the ways around that? So it's a bit of a controversial subject um, because technically there aren't any laws governing streaming per se um, in South Africa. Um, However, there was a recent bill that was introduced. I think it is called the Films and Publications Amendment Bill, I think, that was introduced. And they are trying to um, regulate streaming in a way that doesn't make sense. So usually the Film and Publications Board need to classify things before it's released uh, to the public. And now they want to classify streaming but streaming as we know is in real time so there's it doesn't make sense like there's no there's not a there's no possibility of you classifying something that's you know streamed in real time so there's a lot of criticism and a lot of debate going on at the moment but as we stand you know we actually don't have much laws dealing with streaming at all so yeah hopefully that will change soon what is copyright infringement like i said copyright vests automatically the owner of the copyright will have certain exclusive rights in terms of the copyright act okay now if someone else exercises one of your exclusive rights then that is copyright infringement okay now the in order to determine whether there was actually infringement you need to prove that you are the owner of the copyright so it sounds like an easy thing, like, oh, I create the work, so I'm the copyright owner. But it's actually not that simple because the Copyright Act um, distinguishes between different kinds of works. And 
each different kinds of works, um, the owner of that copyright is not necessarily the person who created that work. It might be the person that instructed you to create that work or the person who arranges the production um, of, let's say, a movie or uh, a sound recording. So it'll all depend on this, what type of work it is and the context in which it was created. We were talking about it earlier, about all the kind of different kinds of copyrights that you get. So we often think of copyrights in music. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, I think naturally as a musician, I just go directly into that. But um, we were talking about copyrights in photography or having a work commission. So if someone commissions a work for you, you know, you're not the you're not actually the owner of the music. If you record something or you compose something, and someone has rights to the recording of yes. it, then absolutely no copyrights mm -hmm. due to that composition that you've made. Or it's so specific. Yeah, and it also depends on the type of work. So there's this weird, I don't, I don't know, like there's an example I can use is when someone instructs you to create an artistic work, um, like a painting, then even though, Iman, Iman, <laughs> <laughs> even though someone instructed you to create the work, you as the artist still retain the copyright. But that's right. not necessarily the case for a sound recording. So it all depends on the type of work and, um, you know, like I said, the context in which it yeah. was created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Can lawyers help with record labels? Um, I, th I think we touched on this earlier as well. Um, we did. I yeah. Think... <laughs> we actually did. We said, yeah, we lawyers can't actually get you the record, the record deal, but we can we can negotiate the, the terms, terms and yeah. conditions of your record contract to make it the most beneficial right. for you. Um, so yes, we can. Right. Obviously, like I said, it's a it's a must if you're going to go for a record deal. It's a must, I think, to go through a lawyer. And do not ever use the lawyers from the record deal companies because no. they have their own interests. In them. You know, they want of to protect course. their own. So always have a, a um, independent, an independent lawyer. lawyer. Um, yeah, so lawyers can definitely help for sure. Should I sign an agreement before co-writing sessions? I think I know what this answer is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I said it's better to prevent, you know, um, someone claiming that they own the copyright when they don't. So just regulate it with a contract. What is the difference between copyright in a song versus copyright in a recording? If you create a sound recording or if you record music, then like we said previously, it's not just one work. It'll be a combination of different kinds of works. So there will be copyrights in the sound recording, there will be copyrights in the music, and there will be copyrights um, in the lyrics, which will be a literary work. And each one of those, um, the owner might be different, um, depending on what the act says or what the agreement is between the parties. Um, and also the rights might be different, like the kind of rights that you have might be different based on the different um, kinds of works, essentially. What is music publishing and how do I make money from publishing my music? Loaded question actually. <laughs>